Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Listen, if you're given any strength, and some of you have strengths, not, I'm not talking just physical strength, I mean strength of character, you have, strength, you have strengths, you have gifts in the spirit, you can sing beautifully to the Lord, you have, you have different gifts, whatever your gift is that you're strong in, you're supposed to use that strength to help the guys who don't have that strength. I mean, you weren't gifted that gift of strength so that you would just lavish it on yourself. This is what it's all about. It is not about taking what God has gifted you and saying, yeah, but it's my gift, it's mine. You were given it for a reason. So that you could use it. And we're going to see where Paul got this idea. Because read on with me here. It says, each of us is to please his neighbor for his neighbor's good, to his edification. Edification means building up. You're supposed to build up your neighbor. He says, for even Christ did not please himself. You know, Paul, he quotes here, he says, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached, reproached you fell upon me. This is Psalm, this is Psalm 69, I believe. Someone look it up. I think it's uh, uh, a couple verses down, uh, 9, 10, Psalm 69. The reproaches, verse 9, the reproaches, hey, buddy, he's so cute. The reproaches of, uh, the reproaches that what, what fell, he says, uh, on you, he said, uh, uh, were against you, fell on me. Now, reproach is, a, is an accusation, a rebuke. Uh, you know, you did something wrong. You're terrible. You ever had someone accuse you of something? All those accusing. And by the way, the Bible says the devil stands before God night and day accusing the brethren. Did you see Izzy? Look at him. He blew it. That person got under his skin. He, he, let, him, he let him have it. That's it. You shouldn't even keep him in the club. And the devil continues to accuse us. Now, the Bible also teaches us that every time he sits there and, and brings accusation against us, who's my, my advocate, my defense attorney? Jesus. And Jesus says, objection, Your Honor. He's like, what, what's the objection? I paid for that. He goes, overruled, throw it out. Next. Then the devil, he just goes, I give up, right? No, he goes, uh-uh, uh-uh. Did you see Barnabas? You know, and he works his way around on all of it, doesn't he? He just always pick, 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 pick. That jerk. Always accusing. But every accusation ever brought against us, every rebuke ever thrown in, in our face, the Bible says, who took all of those accusations on himself? Jesus. You talk about, to me, this is, this is the, the ultimate in, in what I would call manning up. To look out for someone. I mean, if it, and I always think of just in the context of a family, you know, as a as a the, the patriarch of the family being looking after his his household. If someone was to accuse someone in my household of something, the way I was brought up in my Italian upbringing, you accuse anybody in my household of anything, you try to get them in trouble. Who do you have to deal with first? Me. Because I was trained that this is the responsibility you know, as the, as the head of the house that you look out for your family. Someone comes after your wife, watch out. You know, um, right, Barry? Yeah. Barry's raised a Sicilian family too. He can give the amen to this. The rest of you might not know this, but, but this is like a serious thing. You never mess with our wives. And this to me, because I was taught in the scripture in Ephesians, husbands love your wives the way Christ loved the church. I know that I was trained to look out for my wife. Anyone brings accusation, rebuke against her, they got to go through me. But Jesus, did you guys know Jesus does the same thing for us? When accusations, rebukes are 
reproaches are thrown at us, Jesus steps in and goes, wait a minute, you're messing with my bride. That's my bride. I paid for my bride. And the scripture says that Christ presents his bride spotless and clean before the Father. No spot, no wrinkle, nor any such thing. I mean, we are presented blameless before God because of the husband, Jesus. The finished work, what he did, it's very good. He doesn't let one of those accusations, one of those reproaches that were thrown at us even get to us because he steps in and goes, I got this. All those reproaches fell, he said. And that's Psalm 69. A prophetic psalm about the Messiah. If you read that, that psalm, it's all about the Messiah, how the Messiah would allow all the sins to be put on him so that they wouldn't get past him onto us. He would take all of the, the you know, punishment, the, the weight. He would man up and say, I got it. I'm taking care of that you, you don't you don't charge my wife with that. I I'll pay that. Whatever the whatever the fine is, whatever the fee is, he paid. And that's that's what Paul says. Christ did. Now what is why is Paul using Christ right here in this? Each of us should please his neighbor for his own good, to his own to, to his edification, for even Christ did not what? please himself. See, Christ could have said, well, yeah, they really are messed up. You could go ahead and accuse them. But see, he didn't. The Bible says that Christ was spotless, a lamb without blemish, a requirement of the law fulfilled. And Paul says, because Christ, Christ did not please himself, but he looked out for others. He says, who are we supposed to... He's, he's pointing out who's our model. Who are we supposed to model our lives as, men? Are we supposed to follow Christ's example. We're supposed to not please ourselves, and we're not supposed to let reproaches against our family get to the family. We're supposed to step in and say, wait a minute, I'll take care of that. Now, gals, how does it make the gals feel if they know the guy stands up for her? Is that a good principle to live? Me like, she says. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Me like. <you. laughs> That's right, because we're supposed to do this. Now look at the next verse, verse 4. For whatever was written earlier, in earlier times, it was written for our instruction. So that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Sometimes people ask me, why are you so big on reading these scriptures? You're like really into it. You don't understand. It says, through the encouragement of the scriptures, I have this precious quality. Four-letter word. Shares, it shares two letters the same as love in the same two spots of the word, but it's not love. It's what? Hope. It's got the O and the E. This, by the way, for those of you still trying to figure out what I was saying looking at me weird. I'm like, it's English, okay? Simple. Four. Through the encouragement. The scripture brings us encouragement. And man, in this world, do we need encouragement? Every single day we need encouragement. In fact, that's what we ended with last week. Hebrews 3.13, encourage one another day after day, as long as today is still called what? Today. today. All right, I know it's a week later, but we're trick question for you. What's today called? Today. I know it was the same last week when I asked this, but isn't it cool how this works? Every day when it's still called today, we need to encourage one another. And the scriptures are there to give us encouragement so that we can have through that encouragement of the scriptures hope. And hope is a powerful thing. It's, it is one of the most powerful. I mean, I know some of you are like, well, it's intangible. I can't touch it. Let me ask you, does hope have any value? Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. 
Mahalo and God bless.